Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that the entrance of the word will bring light to every heart. Do good in every life. And take all the things that God has not planted away from our lives in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight for the workers and believers uh, training. We're asking, Lord, that your word will do good in every life tonight in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that the word will come afresh to everyone and give us better understanding of your word for proper application to every life, that the word will do good in everyone in our spirit, in our soul, in our body, in our lives in general. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. God bless you, you can sit down. Tonight, we're coming to an important subject, and we need to have better scriptural understanding concerning the topic of tonight. We're talking about divine healing. Divine healing through faith, not faith alone, and faithfulness. He wants us to be faithful, and he wants us to manifest faith, and once you have the combination of those two things, faith on the one hand, faithfulness on the other hand, there will be healing. Healing done by the Lord, by the Lord himself, without the help of man. That's why it's called divine healing. There's natural healing. When the animals, uh, maybe the, uh, the, uh, they stumble somewhere, or their bones are broken, and they're in the forest, natural healing takes place. Sometimes when you cut yourself, uh, knowingly, and uh, you know, it bleeds, and you wash it off, and you keep it clean without even any medication, there is natural healing. Sometimes when you are weak and sick, and maybe you need some sleep and you rest and you eat properly, there is natural healing. But there's also medical healing that, you know, the Lord has given wisdom to uh, the experts and the doctors and the nurses and the medical people and they're able to treat us and give us some appropriate medication and we get healed. That one is medical healing. Nothing wrong with natural healing. Nothing wrong with medical healing. Healing, but there is divine healing when God and God alone is allowed to work in our lives and our body and he heals us by his mighty power. What we're talking about tonight is divine healing and that one comes through faith and faithfulness. In James chapter 5, we're reading from verse 14. James chapter 5, reading from verse 14, it says, Is any sick among you? He's talking to believers, he's talking to the brethren. It says, Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of of the Lord. Then he tells us in verse 15, it says, and the prayer of faith, not the oil, the prayer of faith shall save the sick, shall heal the sick, shall recover the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. He raised him up from the bed of affliction. He raised him up from the suffering he's been going through. And if he has committed sins, it shall be forgiven him. And then we're told in verse 16, it it says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Confess that she may be healed. Repent that she may be healed. Turn around that she may be healed. And also it says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. The righteous man may be 
the person that you seek himself is born again, is a child of God, there's no condemnation in the heart, he's righteous, his prayer, the effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It may be your husband or your wife, yet when the wife is, uh, is righteous and is uh, holy in the sight of the Lord, and the, husband, the husband happens to be sick, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous woman, of the righteous spouse, availeth much. It may be the husband to the wife, it may be the, ch the parents to the children, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It may be a member of the church, a leader in the church, an elder in the church, a standing child of God, and is righteous. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It may be the prayer of the pastor, the prayer of the shepherd over the flock of God. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much and the prayer of the elders and the prayer of the leader will avail over you effectively in Jesus name. There are three things we're looking at today. Number one we're looking at the first and former cures through divine healing. We look at the Bible from the Old Testament to the New Testament and we look at the former cures and the first cures in the Bible through divine healing. Number two, we're looking at the frequent and fatal causes of uh, denied healing. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, people pray and there's no answer and we need that. We need a solution to that. Sometimes we're sick, a believer is sick, a child of God is sick, or even a sinner is sick, a dependent, somebody who lives with us is sick. And we pray and pray and pray and there is no answer. We need to find out what is the cause for that? The frequent and fatal causes of denied healing. We're looking at number three. Number three is the forgotten and faithless uh, condition for divine healing. Uh, the, 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 the condition the Lord himself has given and we're forgetting that. And sometimes when we pray and we're not healed, we, we don't ask why. Why is this happening? Why shouldn't I be healed now? There are conditions the Lord has given and those conditions are faithless. They're still effective in place today. Let's come to number one. Number one, we're looking at the force and former chaos through divine healing and for us to properly remember um, you know I'm putting these uh, words in some particular ways and uh, we're looking at uh, uh, this uh, divine healing uh, and the first people that got the healing before us H is Ezekiah. Ezekiah was sick and he got healed. We're looking at uh, 2 Kings chapter 20 reading from verse 1. It says in those days was Ezekiah sick unto death and the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos came unto him and said unto him thus says the Lord said thine house in order for thou shalt die and not live. Here we find, you know, in the Bible, Ezekiah. Ezekiah was sick. He was a king. He was a king of uh, the people of God. And the prophet came. Instead of the prophet praying for him, he said, Set your house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it tells us, Then uh, he turned, that is, uh, turned his face to the wall and, uh, and he prayed unto the unto the Lord saying here is a man praying by himself praying for himself the first thing you do when you're sick is to pray is any afflicted let him pray. Uh, when you are sick, you shouldn't forget the promises you have, the provision you have, and the possibility that you have that you can pray and the Lord will answer your prayer. The Lord will answer my prayer. Uh, look at verse 3. It says in verse 3, it said, uh, I beseech thee, O Lord. Then he goes on to say, remember now how I have watch before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. 
and yeah, I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept so. You see this recording of a healing. The man prayed by himself and he looked at his life, he examined his life, and he told the Lord, I have walked before you with a perfect heart. Obviously, he was telling the truth. Obviously, he said that out of conviction. And God did not say no, as the God has seen in your life. It was true, he lived like that. And they were told in verse 4. In verse 4, it says, and it came to pass uh, before Isaiah, before Isaiah uh, was gone out into the me into the middle, into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying in verse 5, in verse 5, turn again and tell Ezekiah, the captain of my people, thus says the Lord, the God, the God of David, thy father. It says, I have heard thy prayer. He has heard my prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. Look at that. I say I told the man, you will die, you will not live. And he prayed, and he prayed with a perfect heart. He prayed with a clear conscience. And God said, I will heal thee. Uh, look at uh, the next verse there. In uh, verse 6, it says, And I will add unto thy days, 15 years. That's a uh, uh, first and uh, former healing in the Bible. We're looking at E here. E is Elizabeth. Elizabeth, that's the wife of um, Zechariah. Uh, they had been living righteous lives in the sight of the Lord and she was barren. And even though she had been serving the Lord, she was barren. We may be serving the Lord with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, may be faithful to the Lord, and yet there is a but. There is something physically wrong in our body. And the, uh, the, uh, the testimony that we're given is that the Lord healed the barrenness and she had a child. Uh, look at uh, Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 6. And they were both righteous before God walking in the in the commandments of the in the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless and yet there was this uh, problem and an angel was saying to, uh, angel Gabriel was saying to the husband to uh, Zechariah and said your wife would conceive and bear a child even though he doubted because of uh, the old age but the angel said I come from the presence of the Lord. What the Lord has said will still be performed. What the Lord has said in your life will be performed. And eventually we're told in verses 36 and 37. Look at verse 36. It says, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, as she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was uh, called barren. Look at verse 37. In verse 37, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Barrenness will be healed. Incurable disease will be healed. And all the challenges we have, the Lord will take them away in Jesus' name. A, in the word healing age for Ezekiah, E for Elizabeth, and A for Abimelech. We're looking at Genesis chapter 20, reading from verse, uh, reading from verse uh, 7. In um, Genesis chapter 20, verse 7, God was talking to him, and he, and he said, Now therefore, restore the man, his wife. Abimelech had taken the wife of Abraham because Abraham had said she is my sister, actually half sister, a daughter of the same father, but not daughter of the same mother. And Abraham had married, had married Sarah. And when they went about, she said, don't tell the whole truth to them. Just say, we are brother and sister. That's what Abimelech had and he took the woman and now she became uh, 
uh, like the whole house became barren and God came to him and said thou art a dead man for the woman that thou hast belongs to another man how God was so faithful and so kind and so loving that he revealed to Abimelech what nobody else could have revealed unto him and now therefore God talking to Abimelech restore the man his wife for he is a prophet and he shall pray for thee then it says and if thou restore her and thou shalt live and if thou restore her not know thou that thou shalt surely die thou and thy and all that are thine god at this early stage of revelation in Genesis required restitution. You've taken another man's wife. There's need for restitution. You've taken a daughter belonging to a family and you have not done the right thing in getting married to her. There is need for restitution. If it's uh, taking a woman or taking money or taking a uh, wrong, uh, uh, something belonging to other people and you're sick. Even if you are not sick to get to heaven and to be right with God, you need to make restitution it was God himself that first preached that restitution and look at verse 14 in verse, in verse 14 we're told and Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and uh, gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah his wife you might give all those other things that's okay but what the Lord is requesting is that you restore the man his wife make restitution and we need to be checking up our lives is there something in my life I need to make restitution about it says confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed look at verse 17 in verse 17 and Abraham so Abraham prayed unto God and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maid servants and they bear children age for Ezekiah E for Elizabeth and A for Abimelech L for the lepers you remember those ten lepers that came to the Lord Jesus Christ and they shouted and they said, Son of David, have mercy on us. They were asking for mercy. When we're asking for healing, we're asking for mercy. We're not uh, asking for healing in the, on the basis of marriage. I, God, you must do this. I pay this. I pay that. You must heal me. I do this. I don't do that. You must heal me. We come on the basis of mercy. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, go show yourself to the priest. That means you are healed. They wouldn't be showing themselves to the priest if they were not healed. But because Christ had affirmed their healing, they went. He didn't have to touch them. He didn't have to pray a special prayer. And while they were going, they were all healed. Uh, many times uh, we sometimes say that, uh, you know, we're praying. The Lord has answered your prayer and our prayer. And as you go, you will see the healing. And the people who believe that are there going uh, healing will be manifested in Jesus name and uh, then the next uh, the next letter there is uh, Israel Israel also got healed look at Psalm 105 we're reading from verse 37 Psalm 105 verse 37 he brought them forth also with silver and gold and there was not one feeble person in among their tribes that the healing of the whole of Israel God is a good God and he shows his mercy and he shows his love and power upon all the people that belong to him we're told in Psalm 107 Psalm 107 reading from verse 20 he said he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions he did that at that time and his God he changes not it will do in our lives in Jesus name then we're looking at N 
and is Naaman. And Naaman, you remember his story, he was the captain of the army in Syria and eventually came to Elisha. And Elisha sent to him and said, go wash in the pool side, in the pool and Jordan and you will be cleansed and your flesh shall come back. You know his story, he first of all got angry. Why should he say that? Why didn't he come and touch the place? The servant uh, pleaded with him. He went in first time, second time, third, fourth, uh, fifth and sixth. At the seventh time, uh, the healing took place because it will always be as the Lord has told you. And the Lord has given us the promises, said, do this and do this whatsoever you ask in my name that I will do. And the Lord will perfect his word in your life in Jesus' name. She is the gentle woman. In Mark chapter 7, reading from verse 25, Mark chapter 7, verse 25, for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, and the woman was a Greek, a gentle, a Syrophoenician by nation. And uh, it says, and she besought him, besought the Lord, that he would cast forth the devil, the unclean spirit, out of her daughter. Well, you know the answer of the Lord that was saying to the children of Israel, and it's not right to give the children's bread unto dogs. And yes, Lord, but the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And Jesus said, Great is your faith. Be it unto you according to your faith. And the daughter was healed immediately. And then she went back home and she saw the daughter had been healed. All these people, they give us principles and they give us the kind of faith we ought to manifest as we are asking from the Lord that he will heal us. And this healing that these people completed, I believe and I pray it will be completed in your life in Jesus' name. Ezekiah, Elizabeth, Abimelech, and the lepers, and uh, Israel, as well as uh, Naaman and the Gentile, the Greek, he did it for them. He'll do it for you. He'll do it for me. He'll do it for me. And sickness will not cut short your life in Jesus' name. Now we're coming to point number two. Point number two, we're looking at the frequent and fatal causes of denied healing. Why is healing sometimes denied? Why is it that people pray and sometimes they are not healed? Once again, we're going to use the letters of the word healing. Number one is the hypocrites. Hypocrites, look at Job chapter 36 and we're reading from verse 9. Job chapter 36, we're reading from verse 9. It says, then he showeth them their work and their transgressions that they may have that they have exceeded. There are people that sin and sin and sin and they sin sometimes one time too many. That is, it's now getting to the point that God is saying this is too much. They're going beyond and beyond and beyond. And it says that they have transgressed and they have exceeded. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, He openeth also their ear, their understanding to discipline, and uh, commandeth that they return from iniquity. He wants them to return. He wants us to all return and to come to the Lord. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, he's uh, saying, but if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword, and they shall, uh, they shall die without knowledge. Uh, when he says, repent, repent, and the sick man 
is uh, still living in sin he continues in sin he will not turn he will not come back sometimes such people they are not healed they are just saying god heal me god heal me i bought your life i bought repentance i bought turning around i bought restitution i bought restoration they say i just want healing eventually they die without knowledge he is the evil the evil man the evil person that's why some people they're not healed there's wickedness in their lives there's abomination in their lives there's iniquity in their lives there is evil in their lives in jeremiah chapter 15 reading there from verse 18 why is my pain perpetual uh, you know this person is asking is done evil is committed sin is uh, living in abominable situation and he has prayed and prayed and prayed god you are there i know you can heal why am i not here he says why is my pain perpetual and then it says and my wound incurable which refuses to be healed a bridge and the sickness will not go will thou be all together unto me as a liar is the promise of god becoming a lie to me why am i not healed all this time we could have checked up in our lives we, we could have examined our lives and to see why what is happening is happening and then it says uh, like uh, waters that fail i pray that the promises of god will not be like the water that fails in our lives in jesus name and then we're looking at the adamant the adamant the people who are doing something evil and the preachers will come and the prophets will come and the and the warnings will come and they still remain adamant that's the reason why some people are not healed they say yes i want healing you i've gone for crusade i've gone for revival meeting i've gone to the place to pray i've done prayer retreat and yet you're not healed because there is something you are holding on to and you are adamant about that in jeremiah chapter 5 uh, 30 we're looking at verse 12 for thus says the lord thy bruise is incurable and thy wound grievous look at uh, verse 13 there in uh, verse 13 it tells us it says in verse 13 there is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up and thou hast no healing medicine uh, sometimes uh, even the pills and the medicines and the and the treatment that people are given it doesn't work because god is saying turn away from that thing repent of that thing make Christ your life healing is very easy and to come to you directly but there are damage in verse 14 verse 14 tells us and uh, it says thy lovers have forgotten thee and they seek uh, they seek thee not for i have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy that's the lord himself talking he says i am this sin is from me and if you're going to get healed if you will not remain adamant in your evil i will turn your way your way around i will heal you look at verse 15. in verse 15 it were told why christ thou for thine affliction thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity is very clear because of the multitude of iniquity it says and because thy sins were increased i have done these things unto thee adamant people who adamant is sin and transgression they find it difficult to retain 
but to have healing. Hell is the lustful, the lustful, the lusting after other things. And the things they are lusting after will not allow them to have um, the real healing they want. They lost after this, after this, after this, and you know, they are on and on. They may even have some of those things they are lusting after, but the healing they do not have. Psalm 78, we're reading from verse 30. In Psalm 78, verse 30, it says, They were not estranged from their lost. They had lost. They have evil concupiscence and they have, um, you know, the desires that are not right in the sight of the Lord. They might hear messages and they might hear warnings. The Lord might even give them dreams and, and say that your way is perverse before me. And yet, they are not estranged from their lost. And it continues to tell us uh, that uh, and their meat was yet in their mouth. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, the wrath of God came upon them. The wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the, the chosen men of Israel. It tells us in Psalm 106, Psalm 106. Reading from verse 13, it says, The son forgot his works, they waited not for his counsel. Uh, you see the people who are too much in a hurry, too much in a haste, I want to go there, I want to go there, I want to do this, I want to do that. And they are not seeking uh, the, the counsel of God, it's just them now. And they are too full of themselves in verse 14. Verse 14 says, But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and uh, tempted God in the desert. Verse 15, uh, verse 15 says, and he gave them uh, their request, but sent leanness unto their soul. At uh, there are times you find somebody, a man or a woman, just getting lean and lean and lean. Uh, so and so, what's happening to you? Are you not uh, taking care of yourself? Are you not eating? Um, and they reply, you'll be surprised. I eat more now than I used to eat. But look at what is happening to me. Why don't you examine your life and see whether uh, there's a kind of desire, inordinate ambition, inordinate desire, something you are panting after, something you want, and you are adamant about it. And God is saying, drop this sin and I will heal you. No, but they cleave to what they want, what they desire, like Absalom, cleaving to wanting to have uh, the position of his father, David. Well, it says he sent leanness unto their soul. There is the lost, therefore, and then uh, I there is the incorrigible, the incorrigible. We're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 21 and reading from verse 18, the incorrigible. It says, and after all this, um, the Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable disease. Uh, that was a king in the land, and the Lord had warned him. The Lord had sent messages and messages upon messages to him, and yet he remains incorrigible. Uh, there are some of us, you know, anybody here in our church, we hear the word and hear and hear on Monday, on Tuesday, on Thursday, on Saturday, and on Sunday, and then in the evening in the house fellowship, we're hearing and hearing but if we remain incorrigible and the word we hear it does not change anything it doesn't touch our lives and we like to hear we enjoy hearing and yet we're incorrigible we should fear the disease and the judgment and the infirmity coming upon our lives. Uh, look at N here. N is the non-compliant. The non-compliant. This is the way. Walk ye therein, he will not comply. And this is what the Lord 
wants and demands in your life and yet it will not conform to the word of God. The non-compliance, they, they, they sometimes when they get sick and in their sickness all they ask, heal me, heal me, heal me. Comply with the word of God and incline your ear, incline your mind, incline your life to the word of God. Look at Second Chronicles chapter 26 and we're reading from verse 16 but when he was strong his heart was lifted up to his destruction when he was strong when people sometimes have nothing when you do not have position they do not have any authority they do not have any power they do not have any provision and they're living from hand to a mouth sometimes they're humble sometimes they, they go softly before the lord they are asking lord why don't you do this why don't you do this for him but when they are strong that's when they become incorrigible and then they go astray and their hands are lifted up to their destruction for he transgressed against the Lord the God and again the Lord God and he said went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense uh, there are people that feel, why, why can't I go there? Why can't I get that done? Why can't I control that? And the Lord is saying, no, no, I've not given that to you. It appertains or not unto thee to go that direction. No, but why? Why? Uh, why are they doing and I cannot do it? What a man can do, a woman can do. What a pastor can do, a member can do. But that has not been given unto you. Let there be orderliness in the house of the Lord. And don't take laws into your hand. And so he went in to burn incense in the house of the Lord. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, and Azariah, the priest went in after him and with him a first call priest of the Lord that were valiant men. Look at the next verse in verse 18. In verse 18 it tells us and they withstood Uzziah the king and uh, they said unto him that it appertains not unto thee, uh, unto, unto thee, uh, that uh, Uzziah to burn incense unto the, unto the Lord. But to the priests, the, uh, the, 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 the sons of Aaron that are commanded, that are consecrated, that are ordained to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou has transgressed the people they feel so high nobody can challenge them and say you have transgressed this is not right this is not according to the word of god and uh, so this does not appertain to you to do that and uh, how did uh, this man respond uh, we're told that uh, in verse 19 in verse 19 uh, then Uzziah was wrath. He was angry and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wrath with the priest, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead. And it says before the, the priest in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. He could have avoided that. Many sicknesses can be avoided. Many sicknesses shouldn't have come on us, but when we leave our place, we leave our position, and then we double into that and double into that, and there's no boundary anymore for those incorrigible and uh, non-compliant people. There's no boundary anymore. They do anything and they do everything. Things that are right and things that are wrong, things they ought, ought not to do. And if you challenge them, they get angry. 
and then the judgment, the sickness comes from above. G is Gehazi, Gehazi. And uh, what well, you know is story. Nehemiah had come and had received healing, and uh, he told the man of God to receive a present a gift from his son. And Elisha, the prophet, said, "No, freely you have received, and freely give." Uh, he pleaded and pleaded, but Elisha said, "No." And then he went. He was, was going away. Gehazi said, "How can we lose all these changes of raiment and silver and gold and everything?" And he ran after him and told the lie that. You know, we just received some visitors now, and uh, Elisha, my master, sent me after you to get this and that. And he got, um, you know, things that they loaded him with, and he came back and put his uh, secretly in an apartment in a chamber. And then he appeared, and Elisha said, Elisha, uh, Gaza. Why have you been? I've been here all the time. The servant went nowhere. And then Elisha said, Did not my eyes go with you? When you followed after the man, and you received this and that, and he said, The leprosy of Naaman come upon thee immediately was as white as snow. And because the judgment from the Lord, no man with any gift of healing can heal that man. He became incurably leprous because of the sin. So we understand that uh, sicknesses come on people and infirmities come on people, even death, like Ananas and Sapphira, even death comes upon people, and even the Corinthians, and many of you are sickly, and many of you are weak, and many are slept, that is, they have died because of their sins. I pray God will help us to avoid all those fatal causes of denied healing in Jesus' name. A good, good, amen. amen. Number three now. Number three, we're looking at the forgotten and faithless condition of divine healing. Many of us have forgotten the uh, condition of divine uh, healing. Uh, you'll see that from the first time that God himself made the covenant of healing, he said, if thou shall diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight. Then, he says, I'll not bring upon you these diseases that are brought upon the children of Egypt, the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he lets thee. There's condition. He wants us to hear his word, he wants us to obey his word. He wants us to do that which is right in his sight. We cannot just claim the promise of God while we overlook and trample upon the precepts of God. We cannot just say, God, heal me. But the Lord said, hear my word, and you turn your ears away. If you're not hearing the Lord, what right have you to tell the Lord God Almighty, do this for me? It goes both ways. The covenant has the human path. It has the divine path obey him and he will heal you in jesus name now we're looking at these conditions under the word holiness h is humility when we're humble before the lord then he brings the healing to us isaiah chapter 57 verse 15 it says for thus says the high and the lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and the holy place. I, then he says with him also that he is of a contrite and humble spirit. 
contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the of the humble and then it says to revive the hearts of the of the contrite ones look at verse 19 in verse 19 it says i have seen his way he says he, he has seen it away at verse 18 rather thank you verse 18 in verse 18 i have seen his ways and i will heal him i've seen his way that is humble i've seen his way that is contrite i've seen his way he trembles at my word and because of that i will heal him the condition of healing and which is still obtainable today humility oh is obedience obedience in um, exodus chapter 23 reading from verse 22 but if thou shalt indeed obey my voice that's the condition he has given he wants us to be humble and then he also wants us to be obedient. If thou shalt indeed obey my will, my voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Amen. But remember, we're coming from verse 22. There is humility, there is obedience, and then there is love. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 30, reading from verse 6. These are conditions of healing. It says, And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart, and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord with all thine heart if we love the lord we'll obey him if we love the lord we will answer yes every time he commands if we love the lord we will go and do everything he wants us to do if we love the lord if he tells us to restore sarah back to abraham we will do it if we love the lord if we love the lord he says when you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that someone close to you someone far away from you someone your acquaintance he has an arch against you you know it in your conscience that this is not right what you have done to him or what you have done to her if we love the lord we will do what he has said you leave your gift at the altar and you go reconcile with the one that you have offended and come back to offer your guilt but if we just go on and on activity activity and preaching and you know exercising our gifts and we step on toes we, we never mind and we do evil we never mind and we do things against the word of God and we, we don't think about that all we just do is that I go I'm going to minister well when sickness comes and we pray we're praying with heavy conscience, defiled conscience, disobedient conscience, and prayer for healing, prayer for deliverance, prayer for emancipation doesn't get answered that way. We love the Lord enough to obey him. It says that thou mayest live. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, it tells us that thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the life the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob to give 
them there is the love that obeys the Lord. There's intercession. I in that word for healing. For healing, the I is for intercession. In Job chapter 42, reading from verse 10, here we are, somebody is sick. And many of your friends have accused you and they have said unprintable things about you in your sickness and they have accused you and you are asking for people to come and pray for you. You are bitter, you are angry, you are unloving, you are kind of, it's so deep in your heart what they have done, what they have said. You're even making some vows within yourself. When I get out of this predicament, when I get out of this sickness, those people, if I can't deal with them, I'll never go their direction, I'll never help them. And then you ask for prayer, we pray, I pray, they pray, everybody is praying for you, but the sickness is still there. Maybe you need intercession. You need to intercede for those who have offended you. And then your holiness will show out that you are forgiving them. Your holiness will show out that you have no grudges against anybody. That your mind is clean and clear for everybody. So it says in Job chapter 42 verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends when he prayed for his friends also the lord gave job twice as much as he had before intercession is very important and newness uh, sorry yes and it's newness that is newness of life newness of attitude newness in in every way in your life you are not moody you now you live your life excitedly you're positive and uh, you are not negative anymore you're not looking down and you know thinking of negative negative things you become a new person in the lord it says in ephesians chapter 4 reading from verse 23 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind your inner man, your mind, your thinking, everything. When we come to know the Lord, and we know the Lord, uh, in, uh, you know, with a definite experience of sanctification, our minds are renewed, our hearts are renewed. It says, be renewed in the in your in the spirit of your mind. Look at verse twenty-four. In verse twenty-four, it says, and that ye put on the new man put on the new man which after god is created in righteousness and true holiness look at verse 26 in verse 26 it says be angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath now be angry and seeing not you know some people read it they add to the word of god they say if you are angry don't sin it doesn't put an if there if it's conditional this one is a command it says be angry and sin not before you interpret that please look at verse 31 in verse 31 let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. You cannot interpret verse 26 properly except you come to verse 31. Verse 31 says, Let all bitterness take bitterness away from your heart and wrath and anger, bitterness against people bitterness against your neighbor bitterness against your acquaintances bitterness against anyone the people that have offended you it says all bitterness all wrath all anger and clamor and evil speaking you know the anger that when you say good about that person you always have uh, but, uh, but 
I about this, I about that. You always have something negative to say. And when everybody is saying, we we'll praise the Lord for brother so and so. Uh -huh. You pray, if you knew him as much as I knew him, you're not be saying, we'll praise God for brother so and so. Sister so and so is just marvelous. She's an angel of his sister. Uh huh. If you knew her, the much I know about her, you'll not be taught. She said, You know, I can, I can tell you about her. You know, every good thing we say about her, about him, there's bitterness in your heart, there is malice, and there is hatred. He says, Put all that wrath away and put all the anger away and evil speaking. And it says, Be, um, uh, be. You put away everything uh, away from your heart. Put away everything from your heart. Now come to verse 26. Now that you put away all that wrath and anger and clamor against somebody, against the people, now it says, be ye angry. This is a command. And if you don't obey this command, you are sinning. Be ye angry and sin not. What does that mean? Number one, be ye angry against sin. An angry countenance will drive away the tail bear. Somebody is always coming to tell this story about so and so, about so and so, and it's coming again. You don't, you are not angry against him, you're angry against this gossip. You're angry against a gossip. You're angry against the sin. Wants to pull you into the sin of gossiping with him or with her. Be ye angry. Angry at sin. Number two. Be ye angry. Angry at self. Self. When you look at yourself and the trait of Absalom is coming to your heart that you want to destroy the person ahead of you so that you can take his place. You are angry against that thought, against self. Me? How could I do that? What am I doing with position? Why do I want to kill David? Why do I want to destroy David so I can, you know, be there? Why do I want to stain my hand with blood? so that I will, you know, take the place of another one. You are angry against self. When, uh, you know, James and John, when they were saying, um, well, stand on this side and sit on that side, they should be ashamed of themselves. And when Jesus eventually said, it's not for me to give that to you. How they must have wanted to hide. Why did I go to say that? Why did I go to demand that? Angry against self. And that's what we do when you find yourself going in a particular direction. And you see that this direction will bring the frown of the Almighty God upon you. You say, how can I have a heart like this? I claim to be saved. I claim to be sanctified. How could this be in my heart? To want to injure another person and to want to trample down on another person. What kind of spirit is this trying to work in me? You are angry against sin. You are angry against self. Number three, you are angry against Satan. You are angry against Satan. Satan comes and he says, I'll give this to you. If you'll just bow down. All those things they are saying in the office, if you will, you know, agree with that, I'll give you a position. If you come into covenant with me, with them, and you, you know, get some blood and put it that way and that way. And Satan is poof, pushing and pumping. And he said, do it, do it, do it. You are angry against Satan. I say, I don't want to do that. Get thee behind me, Satan. You must be angry against Satan. If you are smiling at Satan, who wants you to fall, and who wants you to, you know, forget about your Christian life, he wants to give you this, he wants to give popularity and everything. Now, in the preparation for healing and health, before the Lord. This is what we do. 
age, were humble, O, were, were obedient, L, were loving, and I were interceding. You intercede for everybody new, you, you're, and you're new, you're new, and no anger in our hearts anymore in Jesus' name. Give me a good, good amen. You know, Moses was not angry at himself. He was not angry at sin. He was not angry at Satan. It would have been all right to be angry at sin. If he says, I have a temper I need to deal with. And his temper is always coming and coming. And he's angry at that. And he's angry at himself. And he's angry at Satan. He would have done well. But he was angry at the people. You rebels. Should I bring water out of the rock for you to drink? When a miracle worker, a prophet, a preacher is angry at people, not angry at sin, not angry at self, not angry at Satan, he gets into trouble, beware. And then he is earnestness. Earnestness in, in, in Jude chapter 1 verse 3. It says, uh, uh, Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Earnestness, earnestness is part of our holiness, especially when we're physically weak, especially when we have pain in our body, especially when we are sick. When, you know, people are sick, generally, uh, they, they become so soft when they're sick and they're feeling pain in their body, they forget conviction. There's a tendency to compromise uh, because, you know, uh, here am I now, I'm so weak, here am I. Uh, they, they go to have the mind and the stage of a baby, of a little child. A little thing will make them cry. They're feeling sorry for themselves. They do not understand that earnestness is part of their holiness. That when they're sick, although they are praying, they're so soft, and then they overlook what they shouldn't overlook, this one is going on, they overlook it, I'm sick, I don't want to, you know, think about anything now. I want to, you know, get out of this sickness. They come into compromise. They come into cowardice when they are sick. But when we're sick and we're praying and we want the healing of the Lord, there's still the condition, faithless condition. There is still the condition, the faithful condition that we should still and we should still earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Otherwise, what will you do at the point of death? Because one day, one day, one day we will die. And at the point of death, Somebody is, uh, you know, playing the fool beside you. You still can see, you still can think, you still can talk, but you are at the point of death if you compromise at that time. I'm sick now, I don't want to, you know, maintain the standard, you have to, you have to. That's how you will get healed and that's how you will go home to glory. You must always, always, always earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. S is submission. You're submitting to God. It tells us in James chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 7. James chapter 4 verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. When we're sick, 
ideas will be coming to our mind ideas will be coming to our head maybe i should go this way to go that way submit yourself to the word of god at such a time the devil will bring suggestions so that you can get well are you not tired of this pain are you not tired of this challenge that's the time you ought to tell the devil go behind me and resist the devil that's part of the condition look at verse 10 in verse 10 it says humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up he will lift you up the final S is sanctification sanctification is part of the condition for our healing and for our health he tells us in uh, first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3 first Thessalonians chapter 4 reading from verse 3 it says this is the will of God even your sanctification at the time when you are sick it is still the will of God even your sanctification uh, sickness does not um, you know permit us to have hot temper bad temper impatience you know because you are sick I need some water there very quickly and then you know they go to bring the water something delete them and then they are just coming or you just come in now with the water I could have gone myself you know that I'm sick you know I cannot do and you're doing this to me and then you are angry no this is the will of God even at that time of sickness even your sanctification it says that that ye should abstain from tell me ah, are you not there that he should abstain from i can't hear you you should abstain from fornication you know sometimes when you're sick and uh, you know there's a lady taking care or bring food or bring this or bring that your mind may go away from the sickness and then your mind may be on her remember at that time of sickness the condition of divine healing and health is that you, are, you remain sanctified and pure and you don't touch her you don't do anything with her sometimes when people are sick it's when they let down they are good. They are not resisting temptation anymore. But at that time of sickness, at that time of weakness, at that time of pain, whatever, at that time when it's like, you know, you need help, almost like a baby when you're sick, yet at that same time, this is the will of God. Even your sanctification that he should abstain from fornication here look at uh, verse 7 in verse 7 it says for God has not called us unto uncleanness God has not called us unto uncleanness but unto holiness unto holiness we remain holy in Jesus name holy humble holy obedient holy loving holy interceding holy new new nature holy earnest holy submissive holy sanctified and the grace and the promises of god be yes and amen in all your lives in jesus name don't tolerate sickness don't tolerate pain the lord has died for us to take all the pain away by his stripes by his stripes you are healed in jesus name let's rise up now and talk to the lord in prayer let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer healing is the children's bread healing is the promise given unto you healing is yours by grace by provision talk to the lord you remember ezekiah refused to die 
and the Lord said, I will heal you. And I've given you 15 years extra. You remember Elizabeth? Still walking in the way of the Lord, in the word of the Lord. Healing available for people like Elizabeth. You remember all those uh, people? Abimelech, you are a dead man. That woman with you is another man's wife. Are you ever conscious when you're uh, dealing or relating with uh, married women? Somebody else's wife. If you're living carelessly, Abimele cannot even touch her. And God said, you're a dead man. The lepers, they came for mercy, and the Lord had mercy on them and Israel. Naaman and the Gentile, the Greek, the Lord had mercy on them. His mercy is waiting for you, but examine yourself. Because there are things that hinder healing. Hypocrisy that hinders healing. Evil, talking evil, doing evil that hinders healing. Mean adamant. What I will do, I will do, adamant, lustful, having lost, being incorrigible, non-compliant. You know the word of God, you know the way of the Lord, but you are not conforming, living like Gehazi. But as you come to the Lord in all humility, with obedience, and we love God with all our heart, and we love nothing else more than God, and we're interceding for those who have hurt us, we have a new heart, a new attitude, a new mind, we are earnest, we are submissive to God, and we allow Him to sanctify us. He will heal. His promise of a yes and amen in our lives. He will not fail you, He will not fail anyone. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen that brings immediate answer from heaven. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love. Your love, every one of us without exception. And we know that you're looking at us in our situation and whatever the situation may be we're praying oh lord you forgive and overlook anything and everything that will hinder our health our healing in jesus name <laughs> wash us clean wash our soul our spirit, our mind, our heart, every part of us, we pray you make everyone clean in Jesus' name. <laughs> confirm your goodness, confirm the fulfillment of your promise in every life. <laughs> no one will die before their time. <laughs> The number of our days you will fulfill in Jesus' name. 
help us Lord let your promises be yes and amen in every life make us healthier today than we were yesterday and take sickness from the midst of every one of us we are your people we are your servants and we're telling other people about your grace about your goodness about the healing and we're praying for other people they are getting healed we are the very source at the very center of that healing virtue let your healing virtue flow into every life in jesus name we are not weak anymore we are not sick anymore. We will not die before our time. Now let the sick say, I am well, you are healed. And let the weak say, I am strong. May the promises of God be confirmed in every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. You've got it. Go enjoy the presence, the provision, the power of God in your life in Jesus' name.